Good evening and welcome back to part 2 of TCP IP subnetting. So we're going to pick up right where we left off. So in the previous video we appreciated that um, through a simple anding process um, how a computer knows in which network it belongs to through a simple anding process. Um, if you look at what we have here these two computers are in the same network yeah as in they can be able to communicate with each other and as a side note we know that they are you have interconnected them using a crossover cable uh, so once you connect them physically of course logically they need to know that they are in the same network and that's the work of the IP addresses here so now with these two IP addresses, we can see that the two computers can communicate because they know that they are of the network 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Uh, but suppose we put, uh, instead of this 0 here, we put 255.255.0 now.0. Yeah? And this one here, 255.0. And uh, of course, this whole thing is 255. We are, we are only changing the second zero there. So just by doing that, these two computers that previously would communicate, they no longer can. We all can see that. Eh? And that's, that's because computer, if this is computer A, this is computer B, computer A, through a simple anding process, knows that I'm of the network 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Now this other computer here knows that I'm of the network 10.1.0.0 slash 16. So you can see that these two computers now are no longer in, in, uh, in the same network. So in essence, these two subnets, that is subnet 1 here, that's one and two these are now subnets of this uh, this big network yeah they're now slash 16 so we can see that adding 255 to the subnet mask and we have said that an IP address have to always have the subnet mask because it's the subnet mask that tells the computer in which network do you belong to so adding 255 um, will make yeah, as in subnetting basically is adding uh, 255s. Uh, but um, one might ask, will, always, will it always be like that, where you have 255 like that? Um, in the networks out there, you might see something like uh, instead of 255, uh, you know, 255 like that, you might find something like 192.0.0. .0. And here we are talking about this subnet mask. Yeah? So it doesn't have to be 255. So where do these numbers come from? In that case, we need to learn how to do binary to decimal conversion back and forth. Yeah? So in order for us to do that, we need to appreciate the number systems. So here we want to look at things the way computer computers see, see them because I said they see them in binary. So um, the thing about numbers, regardless of whichever number system, is is the weight of the di digit position. What I mean by that is if you take a thousand, we know that here we have ones, right? And the second whatever we have tens, hundreds, and uh, the thing is they are all in increasing powers of 10 yeah so we have 10 to power 0 10 to power 1 10 to power 2 10 to power 3 and that's how we get that's how you know that a thousand is a thousand because every digit position carries weight so likewise with binary number system you know a binary we know that decimal the one that i was describing here is zero nine we 
are used to this right from kindergarten but we have other number systems we have binary we have octo and uh, hexadecimal these are the various uh, number systems that we have uh, so for binary we know that is to base 2 an example of a binary number would be 101010 is all ones and zeros the computer language so likewise every digit position will uh, have its weight and this is 2 to power 0 2 to power 1 2 to power 2 2 to power 3 2 to power 4 2 to power 5 2 to power 6 yeah so the thing about the binary number system is uh, if you want to convert it to decimal all you need is the weight yeah 2 to power 0 will be 1 2 to power 1 is 2 so you have uh, this kind of a thing that you can actually use to to convert from uh, decimal uh, from binary to decimal yeah and this is where we have this handy binary chart uh, conversion chart yeah so I have just taken the weights so with this now given in any binary number like what we had one zero one zero one zero one zero you can just list it here so you have zero one zero one zero one that the full number uh, is it was actually ten ten yeah so ten oh is the whole thing actually so is one zero Yes, that number is, is what we have. So to, to convert this number to, to decimal, you just add the weight positions that are set, the ones that are ones, yeah? Because even if you have 64 multiplied by zero, uh, it won't give you, as in it's just zero. So we just take the weight positions where it is one and uh, we add that and we have converted this number to decimal so in this case it will be 128 plus 32 that is 19 no a simple math of uh, 32 which is 0 5 6 160 then we add 8 which is 168 8 here so we add 2 which is 170 so this number here in decimal would be 170. To verify, you can go to your calculator. And uh, this is why I said that in the exam, of course, you don't have access to calculate. Uh, what am I? You don't have access to calculator. You don't have access to start. Once the, aging, the exam aging starts, that's all you have. You can't access anything else so you need this skill of uh, converting from decimal to binary and back so here we have if you go to binary we had one zero one zero zero one zero. it was how many ten 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 yeah four groups of ten that's what we have hit decimal and it is 170 so that's how we convert so you can take any number that uh, or any binary number that you get one 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 zero 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 and uh, if you line it up here you'll have uh, you'll just need to add these four right so if you add them you'll get the um, the decimal number of of this which I think is 240 if you do the math uh, but we can verify using the calculator mm, clear that we go to binary so we have one two three four one two three four so hit decimal 
it is 240 if you add 128 64 32 16 all right so with that i think uh, we have seen how we convert from binary to decimal now let's see how we convert from decimal to binary so given any number let's say 200 in decimal now convert it to 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 binary so what you need is extend is to extend our binary chart and you can see that you can take the previous number multiply it by two and you get the next number yeah? so you took one times two that's how you got two you took two you multiply by two that's four four times two is eight so 128 times two is 256 then you have 512 uh, we actually don't need the 512, but I'm saying that you can extend this chart to encompass whichever number uh, you want. Yeah. In this case, we have 200. So what you do, you ask yourself, can we get 512 out of 200? Can we minus 512 from 200? Of course, the answer is no. We can't get 256 from 200, but we can get 128. So the answer is yes. So we have 128. If we minus, we have 2. And that's 9 minus 2, which is uh, 7. Right? Yes, 72. Can we get 64? Yes. So we have 64. <laughs> that's 12. So we have 8. Eight, yeah, just eight. So we can't get thirty-two from eight. We can't get that one, but we can get that zero, zero, zero. Yeah, because if we minus eight here, it's just zero. You cannot get four from zero, two from zero, one. All the rest are zero. So for the leading zeros, you know, in every number system, the leading zeros are insignificant. We know that number one now in decimal or two or three they always have leading zeros but we always ignore them so two uh, we can go where did i take my calculator calc uh, to verify we can do now in decimal we do 200 in binary in binary we can see is one one zero zero one zero 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 yeah so by simple minusing we can convert from decimal to binary so the catch here is just to extend the the chart uh, this i'm saying in case somebody tells you to convert say a thousand to binary so you need to extend this to encompass a thousand though in the exam most likely you'll have this from one to, from uh, uh, th this here and the reason for that is uh you have said an ip address is a group of eight bits so with eight and this is what we have here these are eight binary digits or bits you can only count up to 255 and uh, that is if you add everything here you'll get 255 yeah so with 8 bits you can only count from 0 up to 255 and uh, that's the reason why because our ip address we have said they are 8 bits that's how you get uh, that logic so with that now in mind we can go to how we do subnetting so our subnetting scenario number one is uh, we have an organization here that have bought a class C address and they would like to use it to address this network. Yeah, so this could be an organization that have branches. So maybe this could be HQ. They have branch one. They have branch two. So we can see that this thing and you're assuming is slash 24 because it's a class C. So 
with 216.21.5.0/24 they can't use this block like this to address this network because this is not one as in it's not one broadcast domain yeah so in essence we first need to determine the number of networks that we have here so we have network number 1 2 3 4 5 so we have five networks and for you to know uh, i said that uh, every router interface is a network is a network yeah so whenever you have uh, you might have say a lan and then you have a router and another lan here we have two networks because every router interface a router is always a boundary in a network yeah it combines two or more networks it could have another one here in that case you'll have one two three networks so in this case every router interface that's how we are getting five networks so once you determine that the next step is to go to uh, I, I use these three steps but uh, there are so many ways of subnetting uh, but my three steps here have always been uh, faithful to to subnet any type of network be it a class A, class B, class C, because I realize when when guys are new to networking, they they say that it's easy to submit a class C compared to class B or A. So using my three steps here, there's no difference. It doesn't matter whether it's class A, class B, or whichever, uh, subnetting is the same. So anyway, we do these three steps where we ask ourselves, uh, two to power what will give me five yeah these guys or the required networks in this case these guys require five networks so and this is where now our handy binary chart you need to have drawn it so you have one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four one twenty eight so in this case we can see that our x is 3 because this is 2 to power 0, 2 to power 1, 2 to power 2, 2 to power 3, 2 to power 4, 2 to power 5, 6, 7. So 2 to power 3 will give us 8 networks. Yeah, If we say, um, and by equal to, uh, it have to be within the consecutive powers of uh, of of two yeah it as in here is not we are not concerned with the mathematics of uh, of course he, uh, what I'm trying to explain is saying that x is equal to three uh, this will not satisfy this equation so it should be greater than but it should not be way greater than the consecutive powers of two so in this case, I'm saying you can't say that x is equal to 4 because 5, we can see 5 is in between 4 and 8. So it have to be within the consecutive. You can't jump one power, uh, power of 2. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so we see that it is 3. So now step number 2, convert the given subnet mask into binary so you will have one two three four five six seven eight a dot one two three four five six seven eight dot one two three four five six seven eight dot and uh, here you can see is converting if you start doing the minus thing that you are doing where you would say we have one 128 then we do that 255 would be all ones like that so for zero, we don't even need to go to the chart. Zero in binary is zero in hexadecimal. So we have a six, seven, eight. So now the last um, 
So convert that the sumless mass to binary and add the number of bits you determined in step one. So our x which is three, we add those we add ones, yeah. In essence, we had eight zeros here, we borrow three, the number that we determined in step one. So those three zeros have now been converted to network bits. Because this is where I said that by just adding 255 to the subnet mask, you create different networks. But in reality, because computers work in binary, you are adding one. So here we, by adding three ones, uh, first of all, you'll create two to power three, which is equal to eight networks. Now, those eight networks, these guys just need, their requirement is five networks, yeah? So we'll have met and surpassed their requirement. So they'll reserve three for future growth. So in this case, uh, if say this was the HQ, HQ in Nairobi, so maybe the first, this is the first branch they have in LD, and another one in uh, Mombasa or Kisumu, so they can open another one. So they have, will have some IP addresses that will reserve for these guys for expansion. Yeah, that's what I mean. So once we do that, so we have eight networks. Those networks have a range of two to power host bits. The zeros in the subnet mask are always the host bits. They give you the number of host IP addresses and by host IP addresses we mean usable IP addresses addresses that you can assign to devices so in this case is 2 to power 5 which will give us 32 uh, 32 IP addresses but we have to minus 2 to get the usable so in essence these guys will have 30 uh, 30 usable or 30 assignable IP addresses. So it will be eight networks, each capable of having 30 computers in that LAN. And by computers, essentially we mean host because those IP addresses can be assigned to any network device, including the, the router. So now to, to list the ranges or the, yeah, the network ranges uh, so to list the network ranges we uh, is the one that you are doing two to power host bits which are five which is equal to uh, 32 yeah so now we start list uh, listing the, the subnets which are 2216.21.5. Dot zero slash but now is not a slash 24 yeah this is the original that you are given which was a slash 24 now it is slash 25 26 27 slash 27 so we have 216 dot 21 dot 5 dot 32 dot 64 dot so you continue adding 32 and this will be 96, 96 plus 32 is 120, hmm. so at 128. I have listed only five, five subnets of our eight. So we said that by adding these three network bits eh, would get eight subnets so here we have listed only five yeah one two three four five five subnets yeah i'm circling them to so from here this is where now we would do those uh those ranges and uh, not ranges the usable ip addresses uh 
<clears throat> so here we can have the first usable last and uh, the broadcast so it's always good to start with the broadcast because the broadcast is always the last ip address before you get to the next network yeah as in here we have the first sub uh, subnet the second so the last ip before we get to the second subnet is 216.21.5 dot 31 because if you add one you'll get to 32 so the last one before you get to 64 is 216.21.5.63 dot 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 so the last one here is dot 95 uh, in this uh, I think I have uh, no, yes, the last one there is 95. Then the last one here is 127. And the last one in this other one here, because if you add 32, that would get you 150. Is it 150? No. Hmm? 0 carry 1, 3, yes, 160. 160 if I'm not wrong so the last IP address in that case would be 159 yeah so now for the last usable IP address is always the broadcast you minus 1 so the last usable is 30 dot 30 yeah? and everything here is 216 dot 21 dot 5 I like that so the last one here of course is 62 94 126 158 so the first usable is always the network id you add one so in this case it would be dot one this you add one dot 33 uh, dot 65 dot 97 dot 129 yeah, and if you count from dot one to dot thirty, you can obviously see this is where we are saying you have to minus two, because you cannot assign this IP address to a computer or any networked device. It won't allow you to do that. It will reject. So and you, and also you cannot assign the broadcast. Yeah, so that's how now maybe we would take dot zero dot two. If we come back to here. Uh, where we had our our network uh, so the HQ would would uh, uh, if, if this was the HQ this is branch 1 branch 2 so this is where the HQ now maybe would take 216.21.5.1 0 slash 27 now maybe dots that is 216.21.5.32 dot 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 slash 27 where as for the usable addresses the reason why you are listing them maybe you can assign this router interface here i'm shading it so that you can see it uh, maybe now this one you can assign it dot one now the computers in the LAN here uh, now they get the other usable IP addresses until dot 30 so every computer and even the default gateway here they'll be able to communicate because they all they are all in the same subnet yeah so those are the first two maybe dot 64 you assign it on this where maybe the first usable is assigned here and the second usable is assigned here and uh, you can see that here we'll have 28 IP addresses that are wasted yeah you see there's a point-to-point -point link you cannot have computers connected here you see this is the point this could be the fiber cable that is connecting the HQ between Nairobi and a branch maybe in in Eldoret so you see here now you can't have computers so 
but you have provisioned 28 IP addresses that you have essentially wasted. So, and uh, that's a sneak preview to the next style of subnetting that you'll see called VLSM. Variable length subnet masking or mask. Yeah. So anyway, you take all those five subnets and you assign them and you'll have resolved uh, the three. So I think with that, I've shown you how to, to do subnetting with the requirement of networks. Now, I don't think I even need to do another example. Here's another example that you can use the same uh, process, but I believe you have seen how we go about it or if still you have not followed, you can rewind. That's the beauty of having me on video because you can rewind and watch and uh, but for starters here we'll do 2 to power x which will give you something like 50. So that you, you determine what is x then you convert this to binary so that you can add whatever value you found in x and uh, you continue from there. Now looking at the time I don't want to make a video that is too long so we'll put a break there. In the next lesson is where we will look at the next flavor of or the next style of subnetting which is subnetting with the requirement of hosts and VLSM and eventually VLSM. So with that I hope this has been informative to you and I'd like to thank you for watching.